Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, uh, maybe a month or two since I put out the last video. And if you've been watching the channel, you uh, you know that uh, the latest project I've been working on is a series on an uh, amplifier build. And this is going to be the fourth part. Um, after some time, I have uh, uh, finished uh, putting together the preamp section for this uh, amplifier. And as you can see here, it's uh, on the desk. Now, it hasn't been uh, populated yet, but uh, figured we'd start here and then I'll go from there. Uh, as you can see here, here's the board. It's uh, going to be a, a surface mount board, as you can see. And uh, the reason that it's a surface mount is simply because of the, um, uh, for, well, for one reason, the, the uh, fairly large amount of components that need to be mounted on this board uh, within the space that uh, we have available in the enclosure to uh, put the preamp. Uh, the other reason is uh, just because I'm kind of getting into doing some surface mount builds and I thought this would be um, another uh, good exercise for me to uh, sort of work on my surface mount um, skills. And uh, we've got the documentation here underneath, so we'll go through that. Um, uh, just a uh, real quick looking at the board. As you can see, we've got some turrets here that have been put in. These are for the uh, various connections to... Uh, the rest of the amplifier um, over here these this side in particular is going to be where our uh, our relay is to take the uh, amplifier out of standby and since this is all AC uh, this is an AC section here it's been uh, kept, try to keep as far away from the uh, actual pre amplifier which is uh, mostly this half of the board here trying to keep this portion away from the input section so that we don't uh, get any um, any hum carried over into the inputs. So the input of the preamp is here and the output of the preamp to the power amp is here. All right, we'll take a look at some of the uh, documentation here. Uh, first off, this is a uh, just a, a uh, sort of a schematic rather drawing of the Component placement, uh, this is for me to use just uh, so I know where to put the different components. There's a color code here. We've got uh, red for resistors, orange for the tantalum capacitors. Uh, we've got a yellow for the ceramic and film capacitors. All of our diodes and transistors are green, and then our blue pads here are wire connections. Now, there's, uh, there's five wire connections here, and I didn't use turrets for these because these go to the volume control. Uh, potentiometer, so I'm going to use some uh, small audio cable to route these connections. It's, like I said, it's a lot of components. We got uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, different ICs plus uh, some regulators uh, ICs, and uh, for the power supply, and then of course this is a bridge rectifier down here. All right, uh, so the first section we'll look at here is the tone control section. Uh, I decided to go with simple tone controls just to give the amplifier a little more flexibility um, as far as uh, being able to control, uh, adjust for sound preference uh, for the amplifier. And I went with this design. Uh, it's pretty generic design. I, I guess um, it's off an of application note from uh, Texas Instruments. Uh, it's just on the internet. The application note here is, uh, is SLOA042, and uh, essentially what they're doing is they're using a TL, uh, TLC074, which is a quad operational amplifier, in a uh, tone control configuration, which is shown here. Uh, now, I've taken this circuit and incorporated it into my preamplifier, made some adjustments. This uh, design here, they use a single uh, polarity power supply, and the way they do that is they use a um, what's called a rail splitter uh, it takes your power supply and uh, develops a voltage which is halfway between the uh, positive DC voltage and ground and then that mid is used as a virtual ground uh, for the amplifier so that the actual ground um, potential when compared to the mid is seen as a negative so it creates a, uh, a quasi-negative, a quasi-split rail power supply from a single polarity power supply. That's what they use here. Now, in my design, I've used a, um, 
dual polarity power supply. Uh, so didn't use um, this portion up here. Also, uh, the uh, values for the capacitors and the uh, breadboard version I used, um, I uh, changed the values slightly. Uh, the application, you know, if you read about it, talks about uh, what you can do to shift the um, the uh, response, uh, the cur response curve of this equalizer, uh, either up or down the uh, spectrum. And I ended up using uh, 4,700 picofarad capacitors instead of 3,300 picofarad capacitors. And I used 0 0.047 microfarad capacitors here um, instead of 0 0.033. So shifted the curve slightly. And I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to keep that uh, those values or I may uh, do some experiment. I've still got the circuit laid out on breadboard. And I may do some experimenting and just use the original of value capacitors, mainly what I uh, used the values I had, but um, uh, there's an amplifier on the front end, and it uses uh, an amplifier here, which goes through a, a filter, a, a filter tone control network here, and this network is incorporated in feedback of this amplifier, so that uh, it changes how the amplifier responds to the various audio frequencies, and that's how you get your tone controls. Put the uh, potentiometers here in the center, and uh, the idea is that the frequency response is flat. And as you take it, these uh, either the uh, uh, what they have is treble or bass potentiometers to one side or the other, it will either attenuate or um, or uh, it, it increase the uh, response to uh, a particular range of frequencies. So for the bass uh, potentiometer, for example. Uh, it would either accentuate the lower frequencies um, on one end or it would attenuate the lower frequencies on the other end. Put the potential on the center and it should be a flat response. The next thing we'll look at, uh, so we looked at the tone control and I will save this uh, schematic here for uh, for last. We'll take a look at the um, rest of, since we've, we've been talking about the tone control portion, we'll go ahead and finish talking about the uh, the audio chain. So we'll start with the bottom half here, which is our uh, audio section. As you can see, we've got uh, inputs here for our left and right channels. Uh, they'll, they come into uh, level control, which these are going to be trimmer uh, potentiometers on the board here. This will allow us to balance the uh, the input so that the, uh, the output is um, the same on uh, both channels of the preamp. Anyway, so we go from the input section, we've got a uh, input uh, pre-amplifier stage and as you'll notice uh, these these uh, these amplifier sections don't have a lot of gain you can see uh, from the feedback uh, configurations here that uh, there's 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 not a lot of uh, of gain and this preamp doesn't need a lot of gain I found um, it, it does have some and we'll uh, maybe look at that later on once we get the amplifier built uh, we'll go through uh, we'll just go through signal chain and look at some of the gains, but it doesn't have a lot of gain. It doesn't need a whole lot. Like I said, we're driving, uh, the input source we're driving is 600 millivolt peak to peak um, signal. And the the power amp stage only takes about one volt peak to peak to get um, a full uh, output to, to drive that amplifier to 50 watts. So we don't need a whole lot of gain. And I'm not gonna be using this amplifier to drive a, a record player or phonographs uh, or any uh, low uh, low signal sources. This amplifier will be able to take that input signal at that level and drive 50 watts uh, to the output with, with this configuration. All right, so back to our signal chain here. We've got uh, our first amplification stage here. Our tone controls, which we've uh, talked about those already. Again, like I said, pretty much just a uh, copy and paste uh, from this portion here. Uh, you'll notice uh, this is a little bit different than use this uh, type of input here. You know, we go from there to our volume control, which we uh, talked about that, uh, and our four, our five um, wire connections for our volume control. And this is just a, a dual gain uh, potentiometer. I think it's. Uh, uh, maybe 10 kilo ohms uh, audio tap to potentiometer. And that, this will be the uh, one additional control that's 
uh, on the front panel of the amplifier. All right, uh, out of a volume control, we go through a, a final amplification stage here and we get to our output. So these are the outputs of the preamp that will go to the input of the power amp stage. All right, from there, I've uh, added a, um, an indicator and I wouldn't call this a, uh, this is, we can call this a true uh, clipping indicator uh, because uh, for one thing, it does not measure the, um, it does not compare the, uh, the signal to the amplifier, uh, the power amp, uh, power supply rail. Uh, a, a, a true clipping uh, indicator would, uh, would, would compare uh, the signal level to um, the power supply uh, the power supply for the power amplifiers uh, because you know as the uh, amplifier is driven harder the power supply rails will sag uh, because we're using an unregulated supply on our power amplifier and so as the power supply rails sag that would cause clipping to occur uh, at different points based on the signal so um, like i said i wouldn't this isn't a true um, clipping detector in that sense because we're not comparing our power supply rails but it does um, it has been set up to give us a sort of indication that uh, uh, we are potentially overdriving the amplifier with our input signal and uh, the way that does the way that uh, I have this circuit set up here is I'm using a, um, a dual op lamp here this is a TL072 and these essentially uh, are configured as peak detectors so they'll take the input audio signal here and convert that to a, um, a DC level that will uh, change based on the peak uh, input signal and that DC level here is then summed and sent into this comparator so we're looking at um, the DC levels of both channels simultaneously we're going to sum that voltage here and that goes to a comparator. And this comparator is simply set up uh, so that uh, we set a reference value here using this potentiometer. And this will be set up, and the way you set this up is it has to be set up um, by uh, use, with using test equipment. There's no way really to set it up accurately um, just by uh, putting a signal in. Uh, because you know you start getting clipping on the output it's uh until you get to very severe levels of clipping it's really not going to be all that noticeable um so in order for you to try to set this up without uh any sort of um, test equipment uh, it would really be uh heavily distorting your output signal here but uh the the way that uh, this is set up here um on the bench is we'll just simply apply a um input signal into our amplifier. We'll monitor the outputs of the power amplifier on an oscilloscope into a, a dummy load. And uh, we adjust the amplifier, the input signal, to a level that uh, starts to show clipping indication on the oscilloscope. And then we adjust the uh, reference voltage here so that uh, our indicator LED starts to light. And uh, at that point, we know that uh, it's set up and then this is uh, again like a set and forget type setting here and so what will happen is, is as the amplifier is driven uh, from the, the preamp when the preamp output signal gets to a level that would cause the power amp to be driven into uh, to be overdriven uh, so that the output would start to clip uh, that level here produced by our level detectors would exceed the threshold of this comparator here and cause the LED to light and so the LED will sort of flicker uh, in and out. Uh, you know, if you're driving it with a, uh, not a, an audio tone, but uh, rather an audio, say uh, the output of a CD uh, from like a CD player, an audio, a song or something, uh, you would see the, the indicator sort of blink on and off as the those um, high levels of signals uh, reach that threshold and drop back down. Now that provides us just an indication uh, and a, uh, uh, indication that uh, we're overdriving the amplifier and we need to reduce the input level of our source so that we're not overdriving the amplifier. All right, so that's sort of how this works. And like I said, it's not a true clipping indicator, but it is an indicator that we can use that uh, we may be potentially overdriving 
the amplifier. All right, so we've looked at the audio uh, portion of the schematic. Now we'll take a look at the control portion. And as I mentioned in the previous videos, one thing that I wanted to incorporate in this amplifier is a way to automatically take the amplifier out of standby and put it into service based on a signal presence. So we turn the TV on, uh, the output uh, signal appears at the input of the amplifier, the amplifier then uh, is listening for that signal and knows to turn on the power amp section to provide an output to the speakers. Now, I don't want the amplifier idling uh, with no signal uh, because, uh, like I said, when, it, when it's idling, it draws a fair amount of, uh, of power just idling. So, but this portion here allows uh, the power amp section of this amplifier to remain in an off state and so that we're only uh, powering just the um, the the very low power front end portion of our amplifier, and and that's what this signal this section here does. So again, starting at our input, we're looking at uh, we're listening for a signal. So the first thing we do is we go through a uh, a section. This is a mixing amplifier, and what I've done here is I've got uh, a pair of op op amps here. These are part of the this quad as these are a uh, quad operational amplifiers that are used and these are just simply used as buffers and uh as an isolation uh, amplifier what what i found was without using these uh these isolation amplifiers uh if we just feed the signal straight in it this portion will work just fine but what happens is is we get uh, unwanted uh, mixing between the two channels because what would happen is, is if we didn't have this isolation amplifier here We'll get, uh, say, the left end signal will be fed in here, fed back, and it'll get fed back into our uh, right channel. So I didn't want the channels to get mixed, but uh, without this isolation stage, there is no, there is no, um, there is no isolation, and uh, so we do get a very uh, significant uh, mixing of the two channels. So we come out of the isolation amplifier, we go through a summing uh, network here, and we put uh, this combined. So now we've taken our uh, left and right channels combine them here at this point and we're putting them through a um a ample a just this is an amplifier stage here and this is just to get our um signal level up so that we can use it in our next section here so you see that these uh, portions are duplicated and uh you know it's like when i build any project and when you do build uh with electronics uh if you can get a, a building block uh circuit that you know that works and you understand how it works and you can use that building block in, in multiple applications that's what we've done here we've got a building block uh, we've got our amplifier building block here and we use the same uh, building block down here as you can see these are these are all very similar and you know all we do is change some of the component values and we can get uh, more amplification here and less amplification here just to suit uh, the the use in the circuit so you'll notice, you know, this schematic looks pretty large and uh, fairly involved. But uh, you know, if you break it down into the smaller parts, it's really, uh, it's really not um, that complicated. It's really, you know, fundamental blocks repeated over and over again uh, with component values adjusted to suit the application of that block. So again, so we take a, we have an amplifier stage here, and again we have a another peak detector circuit here. Now this peak detector here. I've used um, a larger value of uh, bleeder resistor here for our uh, capacitor uh, as compared with the um, peak detectors down here. I wanted this peak, these peak detectors to have a very quick response uh, to show uh, very sharp peaks. Uh, whereas here, I'm using a peak detector to drive, to ultimately drive a relay circuit. So I'm not so much concerned with um, having a fast responding peak detector, I want the value to uh, to stay longer, to the, the value to stay longer based on our input signal so that we have a nice uh, solid actuation of our comparator circuit uh, so that we don't get uh, any sort of um, oscillations in our comparator circuit. And that's what we've done here. So this peak detector has a much, has a much uh, slower response than 
uh, the ones that we used in this portion here. And again, the reason why is we're driving a comparator. And you can look at this comparator circuit here. We're talking about building blocks. This essentially is the same building block that we used um, down here in this portion. The only difference is, is um, it's not, doesn't, it has a fixed reference as opposed to the adjustable reference there. Didn't really find a need to be able to change this uh, reference set point. This is set to give us about one volt uh, DC level here at the uh, input. So when our audio signal is applied, it goes through our mixing amplifier, goes through our uh, signal amplifier and our peak detector. And a peak detector uh, will take that uh, signal and that will give us an output voltage well in excess of one volt uh, to drive this comparator. So that drives this comparator to turn the comparator on. The reason I used uh, this setup here is because I wanted to make sure that uh, even low levels of audio would be able would be sufficient to turn the amplifier on. Uh, so it shows a low uh, threshold voltage of about one volt and it used an amplification stage here to ensure that even low level audio signals were sufficient to drive, um, to produce a an output in excess of one volt here to turn on our comparator. Because this is really what uh, does the uh, the the actuation for our uh, to turn on our power amp comparator here will turn on in the presence of an audio signal and when that happens uh, that will turn on this uh, will turn on this transistor and actuate this circuit here which is a uh, which is really a, a double delay circuit this is the uh, double delay uh, circuit that uh, I've used now, you see this portion down here, don't necessarily pay attention so much to down here. Uh, this this layout has been changed. Um, this was the original mixing amp that I used. And as you can see, there is no isolation here. So we got, uh, uh, we talked about uh, the reasons why that uh, we've configured it the way it was configured in the final layout. But uh, our double delay circuit here uh, uses a, um, an NE556 timer. It's a dual uh, NE555, which is uh, um, very common, uh, the 555 timer, very common uh, IC, uh, lots of different uses. And uh, the way that uh, this timer is configured is really for me, um, well, probably for most, uh, it would be considered overkill, but um, I, I get a little... Uh, uh, OCD with uh, some of the way the circuits behave sometime and so I ended up using a dual five five a dual timer here to get the circuit to behave the way I wanted it to the sequence works I've got it written down here and I'm gonna sort of read through here so there's two timers we got our timer 2 which is um, the uh, uh, which is an on uh, the timer 2 is configured as an on after delay and it applies a low signal to the timer one reset pin, as you can see here. So our output two from timer two, um, which is an on after delay, uh, which means that uh, when initially when power is applied to the amplifier, um, for example, when the amplifier is plugged in and turned on for the first time, uh, this timer two will start immediately start a delay and so the output of timer two is initially low and it applies a low to the reset of timer one so that's going to keep timer one uh, turned off and it won't allow as long as this reset pin stays low it won't allow timer one to do anything it's going to be held in a low uh, in an off state and i'll get to that uh, in a minute uh, the, with the reset pin, uh, uh, it's time one's reset pin until after a delay. So it's on after delay. Um, and the reason why is because I wanted to, what I didn't want, to, the, the way this circuit initially behaved with, with a single timer is when power is applied, the, uh, the, 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 the main timer, which is configured as an off after delay, would initially, um, 
pick up and close the relay in. And then in the presence of no signal, it would, uh, after the timeout was complete, it would turn off the relay. So I didn't like that um, on initial power up the, re the uh, relay. And the relay I'm talking about is the relay that will actually uh, control the power amplifier. I didn't like the fact that the relay cycled on initially on power up. I just thought it was a little bit, um, uh, I guess it was just not ideal. I didn't want it to cycle. Uh, and the way I've, uh, so the way I ended up doing this, configuring the circuit is with the, uh, with timer two, it keeps timer one off on, after initial power up so that that really doesn't cycle. Uh, so I've implement, implemented this uh, on after delay to keep the main time, timer, which is timer one, off and keep our relay off so that the power amplifier doesn't, doesn't cycle needlessly on its first power up. All right, uh, so like I said, back to timer two. So timer two, uh, as I mentioned, is on after delay. After the initial power up delay, uh, timer two will uh, drive its output high and send a high to uh, reset on timer one. And with the reset of timer one high, it allows timer one to operate uh, normally. So it, uh, it unlocks uh, timer one. Now, timer one is configured as an off after delay. The way that works is that's going to operate uh, off the trigger. Now, the trigger um, is going to be taken low in the presence of an audio signal. So we get our audio signal here from our uh, through our uh, mixing amp. It's going to go through our peak detector. Our peak detector with uh, in the presence of an audio signal is going to be producing a, a output voltage in excess of the threshold for our comparator, which is going to drive our comparator high, and it's going to turn on this transistor. So this transistor uh, bypasses the timing capacitor for timer one. So our timing network here for timer one is through uh, resistor here, through our capacitor and trigger one. So as long as we keep this capacitor discharged through our transistor here, timer one will not uh, actuate because it's off after delay. So being that uh, as long as we keep this capacitor from discharging, there will be no delay. The output of timer one will stay on and the amplifier will stay turned on. So when the uh, television set is turned off uh, so that uh, there's no more audio signal here, uh, the, out, the signal from our mixing amp will drop out. Our peak detector output voltage will drop down, will decay away to less than one volt through uh, the bleeder resistor here, which is um, a 68 kilo ohm resistor. So we'll have uh, some, some delay here. And once this voltage at our comparator, at our non-inverting input at the comparator drops below the threshold of one volt, will cause the comparator to turn off. Comparator turns off, turns off transistor here. That allows our timer one timing network to begin to charge. So this starts our, our delay for off after delay. Uh, the, the timing capacitor will charge through our resistor here which is set to a value to give a long delay of approximately 30 seconds. Uh, once that, uh, once the capacitor charges to the uh, level for the trigger on timer one, it will actuate timer one and initiate the off. So the output of timer one will go low. When the output of timer one goes low, it will turn off a transistor here, which is driving our relay, turning off the power amplifier. It will also uh, turn off the transistor here, which is simply an LED indicator on the board to uh, sort of give me a visual status, status of the delay circuit. And there's actually two LED indicators on this board. The first indicator here is a red indicator to give a uh, visual indication that the initial power on um, lockout function is actuated. Uh, once that uh, once that delay is completed, this LED will turn off, and 
until a an audio signal is applied to the input of the amplifier, actuating the uh, off after delay for timer one, this LED will turn uh, will be off as well. This LED turns on in conjunction with the relay. So when this LED is on, the relay is energized, and when the relay is uh, de-energized, this LED will be off. So this is a uh, just a straight indication of relay status. That's all this LED does. And these, like I said, these LEDs are mounted on board for um, indication only, not uh, on the front panel there. Uh, really just uh, for indication of circuit. This is the way the circuit's operating. All right, so that's uh, that's how this delay works. And uh, so, like I said, um, we've got an initial uh, and a single one-time use timer here that's uh, only used when the amplifier is initially, when the amplifier as a whole is initially powered up. Uh, for example, uh, when it's plugged into the wall and the power button is uh, turned on to power up the entire amplifier, this delay works once and uh, doesn't work again. The second timer here, which is uh, uh, for the taking the amplifier in and out of standby, works uh, in the presence or absence of audio signal. So we get an audio signal co that comes into the circuit, into the amplifier, uh, and it will uh, be detected, actuate our off after delay, so it, uh, the uh, amplifier will turn on uh, because uh, the uh, charge on the capacitors is, is, bled, is bled off which will cause the uh, timer two to turn on, turn on the relay, turn on the amplifier. And then when the uh, audio signal is removed, it uh, turns off the transistor, allows the off after delay to uh, begin, and after delay, turns the amplifier off. And the off after delay is important because, uh, you know, I don't want the amplifier cycling if, uh, you know, you change channels and there's a, a slight uh, pause in the audio or a muting of the audio. I don't want the amplifier turning on and off, cycling on and off. Uh, tested it with a CD changer to see if, you know, make sure the amplifier wouldn't drop out while it's changing discs or changing tracks. No issues there. 30 seconds is plenty of time. If I need more uh, delay, you can always adjust the value of this resistor. Now, this says 1 meg here. In act actual use, it's closer to 4.7 megs. Um, this 1 meg here is a short delay just used for breadboard testing. So that I don't have to sit and wait 30 seconds um, Every time on the relay to pick up, I can get a uh, faster response. Now, there's a little bit of a uh, play here between these resistors. So we see the resistor value here for our uh, lockout timer and our resistor value here for our off after delay. These need to be about a, uh, a two to one ratio to get uh, the proper response. So if you increase the value here of our delay, you need to increase the value of this resistor also. All right. So now that we've looked at the schematic, uh, we see that uh, this is this portion that we just looked at. Now, I'm not going to go through so much here. This shows a DPD, uh, DPDT, a dual pole double throw relay. In uh, the final circuit, I used a double pole single throw or a uh, single pole double throw relay. Uh, so just get rid of one of these sections here. Decided I didn't need. Um, the uh, both contacts here and the relay I had to fit on the board was just a uh, one one pole so that's what I used and also you see here I've added a couple of test points uh, just to give me the ability to uh, test the signal through the amplifier chain through as a signal is sent through just to look to make sure proper response to be able to look at thresholds, make sure that uh, these various sections are working. And the way those uh, test points are implemented on the board is I've just used uh, little square pads as uh, test points. So uh, they're not, uh, you know, they're not, they're not um, like a turret test points, they're just there's uh, etched pads that can be used. Uh, there's not a lot on, on the back side. Now on the back side, um, I'm going to have uh, our controls. So we've got uh, these are uh, dual uh, audio tap potentiometers here, and we'll use these for the bass and treble controls. 
and of course they will just sit in board uh, so I get this in here like so uh, they'll sit in like this so this will be the portion that uh, is up on top and our uh, relay also will sit on the top of the board here uh, right there so we'll have another potentiometer here potentiometer here our Overdrive LED will come out here and feed up through to the top panel. And so looking at the, the way the amplifier is going to go, um, you know, it's going to mount uh, something like this. And as you can see, we've got the, uh, we're feeding the tone controls up through the top. So there'll be tone controls on top of the, on the top portion of the amplifier. So they're not on the uh, front panel. Uh, we're going to keep them off the front panel here. And you can see, you know, we don't have a whole lot of room here. Um, but, uh, and that's part of the reason that uh, necessitated the use of uh, the surface mount. It's just a limited sp space availability. And I'm probably going to mount somewhere down, uh, down here. And I'll have to reroute uh, our input leads and just route them over to this side here. Uh, because, again, that's... Uh, that's where uh, the input portion is here, and then put the volume control somewhere down on uh, this side right here. Let's take a look at the a closer look here at our preamp. As you can see now, the board's been uh, fully populated. Uh, we've got uh, all of the uh, components mounted, and our volume control potentiometer here, uh, which is going to be uh, mounted to the front panel. I'll take a look at the top side. Of course, this is the side that's going to be facing up out of the top of the unit. And when it is uh, mounted, it's actually going to be um, like this here. So we've got our tone controls that come up through the top. This uh, LED, which is going to show us uh, the um, our uh, clipping action here. And we'll demonstrate that. I'll demonstrate that here in a minute and I get this all hooked up. And our relay here, which will take the amplifier in and out of standby. Uh, this uh, trim potentiometer here sets the uh, actuation of this uh, limited indicator. Uh, so this is a sort of a set, uh, set and forget. And then these uh, potentiometers here are what we use to set the input level so that we can get a balanced output and uh, we can uh, we don't overdrive uh, the amplifier. And uh, of course, uh, got um, some uh, w wiring here. That's just the power distribution for the um, amplifier, operational amplifier ICs on the board uh, dim uh, to um, distribute the um, plus and minus uh, 12 volt uh, power rails. Uh, and then a couple of jumper wires there, uh, just um, jumping over some of the traces here. Sort of, it's, uh, sort of uh, unavoidable uh, when you're uh, putting a board together like this. That's uh, uh, you know, a single layer board. So if it was a, this is a two layer board, this would, uh, of course, these would all be traces on the top side. All right, and uh, added just a um, little adhesive um, uh, cable. Uh, Cable uh, tie point here just so that these cables don't flex because I want the uh, connections breaking off there. Uh, so that'll keep that uh, from uh, from any kind of uh, fatigue on these uh, cable connections here. On the uh, volume control, you can see it's a dual gain potentiometer. Uh, making sure to uh, ground the case of um, this, uh, this potentiometer just so that we don't get any noise. Uh, when we're making adjustments here on the front, I uh, plan to use a um, metal knob uh, for the volume control. So, you know, there's going to be a, uh, electrical conduction to from the shaft of this potentiometer to the body of this. So we don't want to get any noise uh, comes in. We don't want it to get uh, put on the system. Uh, so we'll ground the case there so that any noise on the on the outside here will go to the ground. And pretty easy to do. Just uh, if, you know, you can solder directly to the outside of this uh, case here. Just take a, a file and sort of file off the outer. Uh, there's a um, you know some sort of probably anti-corrosion coating or like a um, 
and like a film coating on the outside, just file that off and then you can solder right to the body of this potentiometer. So we've done here and just with a short piece of wire to the ground, which goes back to the ground on the preamp. Uh, these potentiometers here also, uh, the bodies are grounded here. As you can see, there's a um, little wire there that connects uh, those two uh, together. And then on this side, uh, carried through to the ground plane here on the board. Uh, this one I had to put the wire there is because the way this worked out with the layout, I really couldn't get um, some ground plane extension into this portion here. Uh, so just uh, put a little jumper wire there. All right, so we'll take a look at a signal here through the preamp. We'll just do one channel. Uh, both the channels work uh, pretty much the same. And I've already got the, the uh, preamp set up for uh, the correct uh, power level uh, so that our input uh, of 600 millivolts peak to peak will give us our full 50 watts output on the amplifier. And just to explain this setup right here, I'm just using a uh, uh, 15 volts, uh, uh, plus or minus uh, 15 volts uh, coming into the uh, power input here from a bench power supply. Uh, this, this goes through a rect rectifier bridge and a power supply section here, which we talked about that uh, earlier. And uh, so this will be off of a, a, a small uh, power transformer uh, where this is ultimately gonna get powered from. And I've got the oscilloscope here set up. So channel two is gonna be looking at the output of the preamp and then I'll probe through uh, on channel one here. So you'll see the, um, the, the waveforms here. The blue waveform will be the, the output of the preamp, which is fed into the power amp. And then the yellow, which is channel one, will be uh, the one that uh, we check along the, um, along the chain uh, as we're moving through the preamp. And I'm going to use uh, this uh, audio uh, uh, generator here uh, just to give us a more, uh, this is a higher impedance uh, source, give us a more uh, of, a, of a realistic um, uh, impedance for uh, driving like a, an audio uh, source um, so that we're not using the 50 ohm uh, signal generators that uh, we were using earlier. But I've already got this set up. This is set up to drive a uh, one kilohertz tone at uh, 600 millivolts peak to peak, and that's already set up, and we'll turn it on here in a minute. So you'll see uh, the sequence here that uh, we had talked about for our um, our delay. So when we turn on the power supply, uh, you'll see that that uh, red LED is lit up here, uh, just letting me know that uh, uh, the right now it's uh, locked out so that uh, if we applied a signal, it wouldn't um, uh, turn on initially. And so now that uh, delay is gone. So now when we turn on our signal generator here, I'll do that right now. We'll see that uh, as soon as it detects a signal, it turns on um, uh, the relay and you heard that click and that's the relay over here, which will turn on the uh, power amp section, uh, take, it out of, uh, take it out of a standby so that uh, we would get uh, the, the, the uh, output being produced on the speakers there. And we can see here on channel two, we've got our one kilohertz tone. I'm going to probe uh, two points here, uh, or three points rather. First, we'll look at the input, which is off of the input level uh, potentiometer. This is what we use to trim down the input uh, so that we can balance the inputs here. We'll look at the uh, level here, and then we will look at the level uh, here, which is the output of our first amplifier section. And then we'll look at uh, what's going into the volume control, which would be the output of our second amplifier section. Now the output here uh, of the uh, final section, which goes to the power amp, uh, that's already being, we're looking at that on channel two already. That's what we're looking at. Uh, that's the blue trace on our uh, scope. All right, so the first thing we'll look at is the uh, input from the uh, uh, trim uh, potentiometer. And we can see there that uh, we've got, uh, you know, a much, and these are set uh, both 500 millivolts uh, 
uh, on a scale here on the oscilloscope and you see we've got an attenuated input level there. So this is our uh, second point here. This is the output of our uh, first uh, first preamplifier stage. This is what uh, the input is going into the tone section. And the output of our tone section is going to be here on our volume control potentiometer. Uh, so we've got uh, a slightly uh, smaller signal there, and that's just because of the action of the of tone controls. It's going to be a little bit of a, um, of a of a signal loss there. Not a whole lot. We're looking at uh, uh, what do we see here? This is the output. This is what's going into the tone control section. We see about uh, uh, 344 millivolts. And the output of our tone section, we're seeing about 311 millivolts. So a, a slight reduction in um, signal level, and that would that's uh, sort of to be expected there with that uh, that that uh, tone section there. We're going to get a little bit of attenuation due to that uh, filter action. Uh, but uh, that um, is made up for by the um, the third section, which is here. And we can see that uh, the third section here has got quite a bit of gain, uh, almost. Uh, so we said from uh, 311 millivolts up to 619 millivolts there. Uh, so uh, quite a bit of gain there on that on that uh, last section of uh, the amp, the preamp. So I'll go ahead and turn the signal off here, and you can kind of see that uh, we're going to get uh, some delayed action here. So but this green LED will turn off here in a minute. Uh, and that's our delay so that uh, when we remove the input from the amplifier, uh, this will, after the delay, uh, shut down the power amp section. And like I said, that delay is uh, set up for approximately 30 seconds to give us that delay to shut off the power amp. All right, so there it goes now so that we see that, uh, the, in this case, the power amp will be turned off. We've got we're set up now on the bench. Uh, we're plugged into the power amp there to an input and uh, going into the left channel there, as you can see. And the amp is powered on because we've already got a signal applied from the uh, signal generator here. And you can see the green LED lit up there, uh, just letting us know that the relay is on and the amplifier is powered. And we've got uh, two things here on the oscilloscope now. Uh, again, going into our uh, 50 ohm dummy load here and looking at the output of that left channel which is right here for the oscilloscope that's on channel two and we're going to see two things on the oscilloscope here so channel one is looking at uh, the input to the power amp section there and channel two is looking at the output of the power amp so the uh, output across the 50 ohm dummy load and we'll see that uh we uh We'll take a look at uh, the actual signal level that we need uh, to drive uh, to get uh, 50 watts of power on uh, the output section there. I'm go ahead and uh, turn the volume up now. I had get the volume turned all the way down. That's why there's no uh, signal being shown on the oscilloscope. All right, so we see the volume coming up here. And like I said, the blue trace is the output of our amplifier. All right, so we see now that uh, we've got the volume turned all the way up here on the amp. Uh, we're putting in our input signal to the power amp. We're looking at uh, uh, about, um, uh, so about uh, 1.8 uh, millivolts uh, peak to peak, a little over 600 volts millivolts uh, RMS for our input, uh, which is this yellow trace here, and then our blue trace, which is the output, which is going into our 8 ohm load showing a, an RMS value of about 19.5 volts, which you know, if we take that Ohm's law across eight ohms, uh, we're gonna get a, about, uh, uh, it's about um, uh, 50 watts. I think a 9.5 is just very slightly under 50 watts. And uh, again, that can be adjusted. You know, we could trim that by adjusting our input level potentiometer, which we just looked at in the preamp and uh, bring that up uh, to the level I haven't don't remember the math off the top of my head, but I believe 19.5 volts is just right at uh, 50 watts. Uh, we'll take a, I'm going to turn the volume down here just a little bit because I'm going to raise 
the input level uh, so that uh, we can get um, so that we can see what uh, what the, what the clipping looks like here and the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to uh, adjust the level the input uh, potentiometer there on the board so that uh, we get uh, more uh, level in I want to adjust I've already got the oscilloscope or the um, signal source set up I don't want to change that we'll look at it on the oscilloscope first and then I'll show you the how the indicator works so I'm going to turn off uh, channel one there just so we can get a better view at it so right now I'm turn the volume up and you can see that as we go above about uh, so uh, there's a threshold there about 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 22 volts RMS we start to get flattening of our uh, of our signal and so this is uh, this is our clipping the, the power amp's not going to deliver any more power into the load and what it starts to do is it starts to flatten out there. Um, at the at the top and the bottom so that's that's clipping here on our output signal and look at we'll take the camera now and we'll look and see uh so our led is lit right now to let us know that uh it's clipping and i'm going to turn it back down now and as the amplifier drops out of clipping you see that uh, that led is dark now and now we're below the um we're not clipping anymore so, like I said, it's not a true uh, clipping indicator. We'll do it one more time just to bring it back here. You can see it starts to come on, and we can bring it in and out of clipping. But it lets us let you know from the front panel that uh, you're uh, you're putting uh, your your the power going into the amplifier is uh, is going is uh, potentially overdriving your output. Uh, and so when you do that, of course, this is with a um, we're doing this with a continuous tone. When you put an audio signal in, of course, that's gonna the amplitudes of like an audio, say like a um, audio, like like a like a song, like on a on a off a CD or a vocal uh, audio from like a um, from a radio or something. Of course, those amplitude levels are constantly changing with that signal. So this indicator would would uh, come in and out uh, as those peaks went over the threshold there to overdrive the amplifier. Um, clipping indicator here will work uh, with either channel because as you remember from our schematic, um, right here looking at the uh, at our uh, clipping indicator, uh, what we're doing is we're sampling the outputs of both the left and right channels and we sum that. So either one of these channels uh, going into uh, an overdrive condition would drive our single indicator there to let us know that um, that our, our input signal level is too high and we're potentially overdriving the amplifier. So like I said, less of a less of a true clipping, more of like an overdrive type indication there uh, for this uh, for this amplifier. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, this is the status of the build so far. Next uh, things to do will be taking our preamp and uh, putting it into the uh, the amplifier assembly. Uh, so really, as far as the um, the electrical uh, side of this uh, the design of this pre of this amplifier, uh, essentially done. Uh, the only thing left to do is uh, we'll mount a small standby power transformer in the amplifier for the preamp and for the um, to control the standby circuitry there, and then do the AC wiring and uh, wire in the um, the audio uh, the audio signal wiring uh, from the inputs, and then making the connections to the from the preamplifier to the power amp. Uh, and so I intend to uh, make one more uh, video for this series here. So this uh, that will be this is uh, the fourth video. So that will be an upcoming video, the, the fifth video. And I intend with that video to complete this amplifier. And uh, well, so I'll come back with a fifth video here 
and we'll look at the completed amplifier. Uh, what's left for this amplifier is mostly uh, some wiring up, uh, some, some minor wiring to get the uh, all the assemblies put together, and then uh, I've got some chassis work to do uh, as far as mounting, uh, uh, doing out a front panel, uh, finishing the front panel for the amplifier, doing a control panel for the preamp section, and then uh, I'm going to fabricate a cover to put over the top of the amplifier. So you can look forward to seeing those things, uh, some of the final construction and the uh, completed amplifier in the, in the next video upcoming. Uh, hopefully I'll get it out uh, uh, within a reasonable time, uh, just you know, due to time constraints, real life issues. So we'll just see how that takes. I know this video is a little bit long and uh, coming, but uh, you know, uh, with real life, that's just how things work sometimes. So appreciate your patience. Uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hope there was something you could take away from this. Uh, and uh, if you have any comments, feel free to leave comments in the comments section. And I will uh, try to get back to those as I can. Thank you for watching.